this will be my, my 10th year at the International Leadership Summit. I'm so excited about that. Uh, I've been going for, for 10 years, and I have leveled up every year. The content is rich, but you're running out of time if you're planning on being there in person. We have five, you just have five more days before registration closed. We're, we're selling out, and we have to close registration in five days. So if you're planning on being with us in person, five more days, and then the only option that you will have, and it's a good option, but not quite the same, is to stream online. So we'll actually open registration tomorrow, but I want you in the room. It's going to be powerful and exciting and, and transformational, and it's just good. I don't know about you, but I want to be at anything that the fingerprints of Bishop Jakes and this house is on. I don't, I don't want to miss anything because I, I feel like he is in this season of immense pouring. Are you tracking with me? I, I just follow him around and stuff like that because he just might just slip out. Something just might slip out his mind. Just a crumb will bless me. And so anything that Bishop T.D. Jakes and all of his friends and associates are curating, you and I want to be at. And you've heard him speak about good soil. Hello, somebody. It's, it's for entrepreneurs, and the vision is to take you from hustle to harvest. And so this event is going to happen one day before ILS. It's the day before ILS, and it's going to be incredible. Hill Harper, who is, you know, Hill Harper, he's an actor, but he's also, you may not have known this about Hill Harper, but he is a serial entrepreneur. And he's got companies that are doing things, moving and shaking things in the earth. He's going to be hosting this. We're going to have Hall, we're going to have the CEO, the Tavio, the CEO of a Revolt there. You know, and Revolt, if you're not familiar, it is a very uh, prolific uh, a multimedia company run by Sean Combs or Bishop Jakes. That's going to be incredible. And we're going to have brands like uh, Target, Goldman and Sachs, Amazon, and they're going to teach you how to do business with companies like them. So if we're looking to scale up what we're doing is scale up our, our businesses and our organization, let me tell you something. I believe that every believer ought to have a business. You can go the corporate route. That's wonderful. There's nothing wrong with that, but you need to have something on the side that is you and you will look up and that side thing will become your main thing. I didn't like the word choice there. I may have the side thing becoming main thing. That was kind of, I meant that in the holiest sense of that. But I, but I do think that we need to rethink our future financially. I think that we need to really rethink the world is shifting and changing. We're seeing some areas of instability, and I do think that it is important to us, it is a great priority to us, to really take control of our economic future because we can't trust some of the things that we used to be able to trust in. Are you tracking with me? Hello, somebody. And so that's one of the things that I love about the vision of Good Soil and the vision of the TJX Foundation and the vision of things that are taking place here. We're thinking down the road. Because if you don't, I'm telling you right now, this is not gloom and doom because I believe that, that God knows the plans that he has for us, plans to prosper us and, and not to harm us, to give us a future and a hope. I'm not preaching gloom and doom, but I am saying that we have to really be intentional about our future and the moves that we are making right now to position ourselves in a way that, come on, when the winds blow and the rains come and the floods and they beat upon our house, that we'll be able to stand. And so, and so we're creating those opportunities because, again, above all, we want you to prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. So we care about your soul absolutely. If you have your Bibles, come on, let's go to the book of Judges in the third chapter. Come on, I'm ready for y'all. I know y'all stand for the reading of the word. Come on here. Uh, you know, we from the new school churches. We don't stand for no Bible. Come on, stand up. We're going to read quite a bit. And it's just quite a bit. And if you don't mind, I want to read out of the NIV, the third chapter of the book of Judges. And it says, again, everybody say the word again. Amen. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. And because they did this evil, the Lord gave Eglon, king of Moab, power over the Israel. Getting the Ammonites and the Amalekites to join him. Ain't that a mess? You got to go get some backup to try to bring me down. And some of y'all that need to know you so powerful that one person can't take you down. 
Come on, let's go. Getting the, Am the Ammonites and the Amalekites to join him, Eglon came and attacked Israel, and they took possession of the city of Palms. The Israelites were subject. Everybody say the word again. Mm. To Eglon, king of Moab, that's a long time, for 18 years. Again, everybody say the word again. again. The Israelites cried out to the Lord, and he gave them a deliverer, Ehud, a left-handed man, the son of Gera the Benjamite. The Israelites sent him with a tribute to Eglon, king of Moab. Now, Ehud had made a double-edged sword, about a cubit long, which he strapped to his right thigh and put it up under his clothes. You can't let the enemy see everything. Come on, y'all, let's read the Bible. <laughs> he presented the tribute to Eglon, king of Moab, who was a very, he wasn't just fat, he was very fat. <laughs> I love the Bible. <laughs> After Ehud had presented the tribute, he sent on their way those who had carried it. But on reaching the stone image near Gilgal, he himself went back to Eglon and said, Hey, bro, your majesty, I have a secret message for you. Come on here. The king said to his attendants, you ain't got to worry about this little left-handed mark. Leave us. Oh, it's about to get good now. And they all left. Ahu then approached him while he was sitting alone in the upper room of his palace and said, I have a message from God for you. As the king arose with his fat self, From his seat, Ehud reached with his left hand and drew the sword from his right thigh, pay attention, and plunged it into the king's belly. Please listen. Even the handle sank in after the blade, and his bowels, uh-oh, discharged. He should have had on a pen. Listen. Please watch this. Watch this. Uh, the sword with his right thigh plunged into the belly. Even the handle sank in after the belly. His belly, belly uh -huh. Ehud did not pull the sword out. And the fat closed in over it. Then Ehud went out to the porch. He shut the doors of the upper room behind him and locked them. Do me a favor. Touch your neighbor say, it's on you. You can be seated. It's on you. Go ahead and have a seat. It's on you. Stop looking for somebody to deliver your family. It's on you. Stop waiting on somebody to get you out of debt. It's on Come on, let's talk for a minute. If you study the scripture, you would know that Joshua did not leave a successor. After the death of Joshua, the Israelites go into an heir of what is known as judges. Please listen to this. God gave them Moses. And then before Moses passed, he handed them Joshua. But when Joshua passed, they had no one to look to. So for the first time, you see something in Judges 1 and 1. After the death of Joshua, here's the line, the Israelites asked the Lord, in all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he going to tell you what to do next. Stop waiting on somebody to tell you what to do. I dare you to get with somebody that believes that he's a God, that he is an answers, 
And the Bible says, and the Israelites asked the Lord, who of us is to go up first to fight against the Canaanites? They're now being ushered into the judges. Please listen. If you study the scripture, this will cover between 300 to 350. 50 years of the Israelites' history. God, please listen to this, use either a man or a woman. Oh, I feel some of y'all, sorry for some of y'all, because you don't think that God could use a woman. Mm. Isn't it amazing that he had to use a woman to carry the promise? Come on here, stop playing them, stop playing them, stop playing them. Let's talk for a minute. Let's talk. You ready? So God used men or women to deliver his people. Now here's the line what you get. Regardless of their issues, your assignment, pay attention, is bigger than your flaws. He's not looking for flawless. He's only looking for willingness. Come on, we're going to be out here for a minute. If you study the book of Judges, you will see that the children of Israel kept going in a cycle. I had a, uh, a chart. I want them to put it on the screen. It is like a circle. They would end up in sin. When they ended up in sin, they would then slide over, slide over to slavery or being subject. Mm. When the pressure became too great, they would then step over to the third S, which is supplication, which is prayer. When they begin to pray, God would raise up an individual and call them the deliverer. Mm. Come on here. I need you to touch your neighbor before we go a little further. Tell them, hey, 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 it's on you. It's on you. You're, you're it. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. When, they would, when he would raise up a deliverer, please listen to this. The deliverer would basically break the hand of the enemy, and I need some of y'all to hear this, and then you would have what we call a season of silence. What does that mean? No warfare. Nobody bothering you. Even though they want to come after you, God won't let them touch you because you've been through enough that you need a break from the enemy. Is there anybody that just need a season of silence? Shut the mouth of the enemy. Pull back the hand of the enemy. Let every naysayer shut their mouth. Don't let me hear nothing. Don't let me see nothing. Don't let me feel nothing. Let me sleep better than I've ever slept in my whole life. Come on, y'all. We just going to prophesy a little bit. I'm a preacher and a pusher. I'm going to push you today. I need you to touch somebody and say, I decree and I declare that God's about to give you a season of silence. No more migraine headaches. Just keep going in circles. Just keep going in circles. Just keep going in circles. What's the reason of the cycle? Now it gets interesting. What's the real? These are the same ones that got delivered out of Egypt. These are the same ones that he brought across the Red Sea. These are the same ones that Joshua them fought when they got to the, the promised land. Why are they in this cycle? I found it. In Judges 2, verse 10. Allow me to go King James Version on you now. You know it's deep when you go get the King Jimmy, don't you? <laughs> and, and there arose another generation after them which knew not the Lord. Here's a lot I want you to get. Nor yet the works which he had done. They were not familiar with the testimonies of the children of Israel. We are raising a generation that were born in our reaping season but don't know our sowing record. Mm. Let's talk. Your kids got their own bedroom, but they don't know how you were raised. You didn't even have your own bed. Some of y'all should take them in the room and the whole family get in the bed with them. And say, I want you to know that you and we, we can sleep like this. And the only reason you got this bed, because didn't nobody do this but... Every time you drive by McDonald's, they talking about they want a Happy Meal. I got your Happy Meal. Come on to the house. 
You need to make them a mayonnaise sandwich. When they say they thirsty and they want to pop, you tell them we got some sugar water. Y'all ain't saying that to me. Say, before I go get you a happy meal, I want you to get happy. I want you to thank God because, guess what? We couldn't eat like this, but God's been good to me. And you Look at some of them young people looking at me. I don't like you. I don't like you. Laying up there with a remote control in your room. You should just break in the room one day and turn it off. Hand them a, a pair of pliers and a hanger. Wrap some aluminum foil around the hanger. Say, now this is your cable right here. <laughs> this is why, watch me. This is why I wish I would. Let a 20-some or 30-some outpraise me. If some of y'all are sitting here, your children need to see your praise. Because your praise remind them of what God did for you. Don't you get that rich that you can't give God any glory? I want everybody under 50, I want you to pay attention to the sound that's about to be released in this building. All of us over 50, 50 and older, I need to hear a praise to the God. Didn't nobody do this but God. I graduated, God did it. I got a car, God did it. I got a house, God did it. I got favor, God did it. Look where he brought me from. Brought me out of darkness. Hey, hey, 50 and older, find somebody around you and touch them and say, did nobody do this but You got to keep telling them that. You got to keep telling them that. I want to make sure you never get conceited. I want to make sure you never get prideful. Because just like I got it, you can lose it. Stop. So this, this, this explains the cycle. This explains the cycle. Because if you really knew him, can I show you something? I'm going to show you the scripture that I found. This, this scripture messed me up. Because some of y'all, you know, I'm not used to this. Um, you going to church today? How many of y'all remember on Saturday night, go get your church clothes ready? And when you come in from church, take them clothes Running all up outside with them dress shoes on. <laughs> Look at this scripture that I found. For every parent, I want you to get this. In Deuteronomy 6 and 7, impress them on your children. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. When you lie down, keep telling them about how good God's been to you. And when you get up before they leave the house, anoint their head with oil and tell them I release you with angels. Won't nobody touch you. Won't no bullet come near you. No violence is going to come near your school. Come on, we out here now. Come on, out here now. So let's talk. So they're in this cycle. They're in this cycle. Everybody say the word again. again. If you bring this up, I can show you in chapter 3. Let's read it one more time. In verse 12. Again, 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 again. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. What do you mean? They're mingling with people that they shouldn't be mingling with. They're doing some things that they just don't do. And they're worshiping not like they used to worship. You got to be careful that you don't get this common with God. 
You got to hear me. So what God would do is say, listen, I cannot handle seeing you in this state. So I need to add a little pressure to get you back to me. So he would then go into, again, the second S, which is subject or slavery. Here's the Bible in verse 14. The Israelites, again, were subject to the king of Moab for how long? For 18 years, which means Eglon is going to have you, which means Eglon is going to feel like a grip on you, which means Eglon is going to stress you, which means Eglon is going to feel like he's choking you. You got to hear me. This pressure is not to kill you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I don't care who died from stress, you're not dying from it. This, this hope that you're feeling, I just need you to feel it because I'm squeezing you to get something out of you. You're not going to lose your life, but the moment that you give me what I need, then I'll release the grip. You can't go to no psychic and ask a psychic what you should do. You can't go to a palm reader and ask a palm reader what you should do. As a matter of fact, you're not going to seek the advice of anybody. I'm going to hook you up with somebody that got a prayer wheel like you got a prayer wheel. Ah. <laughs> Let's go. So then when, 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 when the pressure became too great, when the pressure became too great, when the choke became unbearable, I got a question for you. Aren't you tired yet? <laughs> Some of y'all have a high tolerance level for pain. You done lost your mind. This could be over real quick, but it won't lift until you get to the third S, which is supplication. Oh my God. In verse 15, you ready? Look at me. Look at me. Again. Everybody say the word again. Again. The Israelites cried out to the Lord. Look at me. You will read this line about six or seven times alone in the book of Judges. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. What father ignores the cry of their children? When a parent, every parent knows the cry of their child, his ear is not too heavy that he cannot hear you. I mean, and he's attracted, listen carefully, to sound. He's not used to mute. Come on here, you sang it when she sang it in worship. When he sits, the four beasts fly back and forth. The 24 elders are casting their crown. Bible, Bible, day and night. Never cease. There's a sound. Oh, can you imagine if this section began to cry? That section began to cry. This section began to cry. That section began to cry. Over there, over there, if we all start saying, Jesus. Some of y'all not opening your mouth yet. And I'm telling you, the spirit of Eglon won't get off you until you open your mouth. And I'll put somebody next to you that believe God like you believe God, which means you got back up in the spirit because one could put a thousand a flight. I need you to make sure you in a section that got a travail in their soul. Please, y'all, this is something about God when you start saying, oh, Jesus. Everybody that's been stressed out, throw your head back, crawl. oh. Everybody that need a breakthrough in the house online, he even hear you whatever country you in. Do me a favor, do me a favor, grab an neighbor by the hand and say, Jesus. <laughs> he hears us. We gonna get the spirit of Eglon off you by the time you get home. Do me a favor, intercessors, start waving your hand over your section, saying, come on through here, come on through here, 
give us a breakthrough. Lift the hand of the enemy. Bind stress. Get the devil out of our house. Get the enemy out of our city. Come on, y'all, do it up in here. JK, I wish I had some intercessors that know how to pray in the Holy Ghost. That is, there's a sound. Cut the music. Keep your sound, keep your sound, keep your sound, keep your sound. Oh, God. Oh, God. We need you. Hear our prayer. Hallelujah. Come on, say, oh, God. That thing is amazing. There's a blessing in your O because behind your O is all your stress. Behind your O is all your pain. Come on, y'all. Give it all you got. He's about to hear us. Double your up and say, oh, God. Come on. Shake it. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, I come in the midst of you. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, I sit in your section. Every young person, open your mouth. Come on, one more time, whole house. Oh, God. You about to be it. Something's about to get on you. On your way to your seat, test three people and say, you're it. You're it. You're it. You're it. You're it. It's on you. You're it. That O got you in trouble. That travail got you picked. Oh, God. We need you today. We can't go into another quarter without you. We need you to bind the hand of the enemy. We need you to lift stress up of our lives. We need you to make a way out of no way. We need you to provide like you've always provided. We need you to heal like you've always healed. We need you to bind the devil. We need you to bind the spirit of Eglon. Come on, y'all. Touch three people and say, you're it. So who is he about to raise up? So who is he about to raise up? So who is he about to raise up? Who is he about to put something on? Who is he about to lift up? Who is he about to give an assignment? Who is he about to make a breakthrough for? Who is he about to use in your family? Who is he about to use in your business? Who is he about to use in your church? I'm sorry. Can I show you something? Have a seat. Oh! So who? Who? Who gonna handle this? Who's gonna address it? Eglon, who gonna help you get this at your house? Era mm. Messiah. You ready? Have a seat for one minute, cause I wanna make sure you get it. I gotta make sure you get it. I gotta make sure you get it. I have to make sure that you understand what's about 
to happen. Mm. And the truth is, you're crying unto the Lord. Look at me. And out of nowhere, I mean, we don't know his age. We don't know his title. We just know that he's from the Benjamites. That's all we know as far as his background. And the Bible says, and he gave them a deliverer. Didn't have to fill out an application. Didn't have to stab nobody in the back. Didn't have to run up behind nobody. You just got picked out of everybody to be the one. Oh, y'all ain't saying that to me now. How many y'all know? See, y'all got TV games. We didn't have television games. We had free games. And we played a game called It. And you would run. And the person would just have to touch you. And the moment that they touch you, that means you are it. I came to tell some of y'all, you about to get a touch. And you about to go and defeat. Please be prophetic. I need you to touch three people around you. Tell them, you're it, you're it, you're it, you're it. You're the chain breaker. You're the curse breaker. It's going to start with you. You're the last one to experience poverty. The bloodline curse is about to be broken. You would not die of cancer. I don't care who died of cancer. The book stops here. Your children will never go through what you... You're gonna be the first one to do it. Okay, 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 calm down. Okay. Okay. So Sarah, you gotta get this. You gotta get the revelation. Come on, have a seat, sit down. Okay. And he gave them, and he just gonna, he just gonna turn you loose. And he gave them. And he gave them somebody that could handle that stress. And he put somebody in your family that could shut this devil down. Y'all yeah. ain't got to say nothing to me. He put somebody around you. This, you ain't even got to fight. You just got to be connected. <laughs> Come on, y'all. I'm not playing with you. Okay. I need you to touch somebody and say, you are it you about to shut down the frustration uh-huh so question 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 why him why him why him i got a better question why not him? The only thing that matters is that you get free. And I don't care who God want to use to change the temperature. Ready? So I kept reading this. I kept reading this and the Lord say, here what the Lord told me to tell you. Tell my people to pay attention to what is frustrating them. Because what frustrates you is about to become your assignment. Mm -hmm. Ask him, ask him, what's really been bothering you lately? Tell them to trace what's bothering them and they'll find their purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ask them what's disturbing their sleep at night. Ask them what's causing them to lose hours of sleep. And if you trace that, you'll find your ministry. And most of you all, your ministry is not in the pulpit. I'll sit you next to what's been taking you through. And I'll let you lay hands on them. Oh, y'all. So then I kept, let's go, let's talk, let's talk. So then I kept reading, I'm like, God, I stayed in prayer. I said, God, how does Ehud's name just come up? And the Lord began to deal with me. Well, you don't know what Ehud had been praying when he felt the stress of this thing. You don't know if Ehud had been saying, God, 
if you could use me, get the glory out of my life. I don't need recognition. I just need to see this thing break. I don't even need a platform. I don't even need an audience. Just use me. Let me be a secret agent. Let me sit all the way in the back and bind every witch that come up in here that try to shut down anything. Just lead me to every demon that want to see us fail. So here's the line, and I, let the, I, I gave you guys this scripture when I was here for Wednesday night Bible study. And this is the thing, because nobody knows your, your prayer life. Because you, 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 felt, you felt as if you weren't worthy to say it out loud. So God goes into your secret prayer life. Because when you look at other people, they're so much more qualified than you. Uh, yep, but he's about to take the foolish things to confound the wise. And I, I read this scripture, you can bring it up in Psalms when it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you, and he will give you, and he will give you, and he will give you. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Watch me, but the Amplified Bible added something. The secret petitions. Cause I, if I say it, I'm gonna sound stupid. If I say it, they're going to look at me like I'm crazy. But the Lord told me to tell you, he's about to unveil your secret. You about to go where you never thought that you would go. You about to do what you never even imagined that you would be able to do. Those of you that want God to get the glory out of your life, lift your hands, put your head back, and just say, yay! Yes, God. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Use me for your glory. Use me for your glory. All right, three points, we out. So what, what is it? What is it about Eglon? What is it, what are his characteristics that God would give them a who? What is it about this man that God say, let me come to the back and find somebody that everybody was playing like a cheeseburger where they a Big Mac, two off beef patty, special sauce lettuce. And I'm about to shift them. I'm about to shift them. I'm about to shift. Number one, number one, I need you to pay attention. Now, this is who you gotta get, because some of y'all been playing yourself. He has a deficiency. If you were left-handed in that time, you were considered to be a handicap you were looked down upon because of your deficiency. And watch me, isn't it amazing how God always handpicked people? <laughs> Woo! Oh, see, you keep looking at the finished product. Let me give you some history. He picked Moses, and he had a speech issue. He picked Jacob, and he walked with a limp. He picked Abraham, and he was 75 years old. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me? He picked Rahab, and she was a hooker. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me? He picked a widow, and she was a single parent and didn't have no money. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me? And couldn't get no support from the government. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me? He picked Elijah, and he struggled with depression. He picked Paul, and he was a thug. What make you think God can't take your... God can't take, wait, 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 wait. Can I tell you something? And some of y'all, you keep looking for an ordained prophet, an apostle or a bishop, but the one next to you that don't look like they got it is the one that got the oil. 
Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna call those of you all up. You ain't got no papers, but you got oil. You ain't, got, you don't have a church, but you got a prayer life. Those of you that know that God deal with you, and you're not perfect, lift your hands again and say, "Yay!" Let your neighbor say, and it's on you. And it's on you. Wait, 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 wait. So you guys are deficiency. Here's the next one. Here's the next one. He's creative. Everybody else is just carrying a sword. This is the first time that you'll ever read in Scripture about a two-edged sword. And the Bible says, watch me, he didn't buy it either. Verse 16, now Ehud had made, Bible, does that sound a little hood? Now Ehud had made a double-edged sword. Where you get this from? I need, this, I need you to take me to your point of reference. I can't explain it. I just saw it in my mind. And I see what don't nobody else see. I just want to talk to the creative people. See, some of y'all around here trying to be like everybody else. But what I see, I've never seen before. I want to talk to those of y'all that even when you read the Bible, you don't read it like everybody else. You're able to pull some revelation. That nobody, and God is about to use you creative people. I mean, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Like David, like David, he saw try to put him on his arm. He said, no, no, get this off me. All I need is five stones and a sling. You done lost your mind. Uh, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. He called creative people like a man named Noah because they had never, 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 never been an ark built, but you about to build was never been built before. Oh, I'm in here now. Come on, everybody, get on your feet. Get on your feet. Wait, 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 wait. He created Peter, 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 Peter. He was so creative that when Jesus walked on the water, he was in there with all to He said, bid me to get out this boat. I see myself walking on water. Hey, 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 Potter's house. Do you understand what God is saying? That he's about to come after those that have disruptive thinking. It's not by accident that Bishop is releasing a book about disruptive thinking because he's about to, watch me, what you saw, you going to touch. What you dream, you going to live. What you feel, you're going to experience. Why? Because God gave it to you. Nobody else has it, but God gave it to you. If you know, I want every creative person, the way you dress is creative. The way you wear your hair is creative. You put a ponytail at the top of your head and make it look fly. People asking you where you got your hair done, you did that at the house. Those of y'all that match colors and prints and still come in looking fly. People think you've been to Saks Fifth Avenue. You got that at a thrift store. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. Every creative person that's not like anybody else, can I get you to release a praise for your creativity? Your name is about to be brought up. Your name is about to be brought up. Your name is about to be brought up. A door is about to be opened. An opportunity is about to be presented. Why? Because you have a deficiency. Why? Because you are creative. Why? Because you bold. You're bold. You're not scared. Lift your hands and worship God for 10 seconds. 10 seconds, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, I promise you we're almost done, 4, can everybody just say yes Lord? Okay, look, so you have a deficiency, okay. So you're creative, good. 
Now I need you to be unapologetically bold. I need you to be unapologetically bold. What do you mean? God, I rebuke the spirit of shyness. And I pray that you release a bold anointing. Because some of y'all have been holding back because you don't want to upset nobody. Get ready to be mad at me. Because I'm about to give it everything I got. You ready? Let's just talk. Let's talk. So he's about to open some doors. And I need you to be bold in your approach. Don't come in with your head down. Don't come in like, oh, I'm so, uh-uh, hold your head up. You should start practicing how you gonna walk in the room. See, I'm from the hood. I don't know what that is, that, one, that right side. And you gotta come in like, I wish somebody would try to put me out of here. Cause you don't know what I went through to get here. And if you were going to handle it, you would have handled it before I showed up. And the Bible says, and then Ehud then approached him while he was sitting alone in the upper room of his palace. Then I need you to be bold to speak. I need you not to be afraid to open your mouth and speak. When they ask you, uh, what do you want your salary to be? <laughs> He's done into lateral movements. I make 80, so I'm going for 90, huh? <laughs> Please watch. He walked up to him and said, I have a message from God from you. I have a message from God from you. He didn't stutter. I have a message from God from you. You got to be bold in what you say. Some of y'all, uh-uh, this little timid spirit is about to get off of you. All these anxiety attacks you have, I stop! Bring your body under subjection. Tell your heart, simmer down. We've been waiting on this opportunity and we about to get everything that God has for us. Do me a favor, touch your neighbor and say, I come against the spirit of fear. Just lean in. So the old John Hannah, the old John Hannah, would have been shaking to come in here. The old John Hannah, when he, got, when he would get nervous, his mouth would get dry and his tongue would get slow and he would stutter because he was intimidated by the crowd. Because he was worried about what people were going to think or what people were going to say. And I remember when the Lord began to deal with me, he put me, I was in Australia, as a matter of fact, and 12,000 people, and my heart stopped beating, and the Lord's like, calm down. Everything that you've gone through has prepared you for your right now. Please encourage your neighbor and tell him, you got this, you. So the Lord began to teach me how to master my situation. Bring your body under subjection. Because there's a, there's a contract waiting on you. There's a book deal that you're about to get. Your name is about to be brought up. And when I bring your name up, I'm not bringing you up to fail either. You're going to complete your assignment. Come on, John. You're going to finish strong. And they've been, and watch me, and they're gonna play you too. King told everybody, go ahead and leave. He left handed. I ain't got nothing to worry about with this one. Please leave. Please give me a chance. And the Bible says, even, 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 even uh, Ehud sent those that had carried the tribute home. Everybody go home. Everybody go home. Everybody go home. I got this. 
the king said, come on up here. He in the upper room. And when he went to get up, when he went to get up, that was his opportunity. You got to hear me. Something is going to be presented to you. It's going to stand up in your face. It's going to look you dead in your face. And it's everything that you've been praying about. It's everything that you've been believing God for. Watch me, watch me, watch me. And they had been captive for 18 years. So what you've been praying for for 18 years, you about to shut it down in one day. Y'all not ready? <laughs> they that wait on the Lord. Some of y'all, you've been waiting on God. And God say, this is your year. Okay. So allow me just to be a little prophetic. Just allow me just to be a little prophetic. So I was in prayer. I said, God, why are you sending me? Why is Bishop calling me to come here on a Sunday? He says, I need you to pay attention to the timing. I'm bringing you at the end of the first quarter of the year. Because the next quarter, I'm about to put something right in front of them. Y'all not hearing something me. You're not hearing me. Something that you've been praying about for years, your phone is about to ring. What you've been praying about for years, it's about to hit your email. On the count of three, all I, those of you that have a petition before the Lord, on the count of three, I just need you to release your name. Your name is gonna pull your foul. Your name is gonna pull your request. On the count of three, say your name and put a praise behind your name. One, two, three, John Hannah. It's time to move. It's time to do what you do. It's time to be who you are. It's time to go where God is about to take you. It's time to kill what you're about to kill. It's time to shut down what you're about to shut down. It's your turn. It's your turn. Pay attention. So Ehud reach, reach, reach for what nobody's paying attention to. Because everybody looked to the right. And he reached, so nobody's going to see your reach. You're about to be a big surprise. With his left hand, bring the scripture up, bring the scripture up with his left hand and drew his sword from his right thigh. Pay attention. And he went full speed ahead. Watch me. This ain't no shanking. No, no. With one blow, with one opportunity, you about to shut this thing down. With one door, it's about to shift your whole economical status. Okay. Shia. And he plunged. And he plunged into the king's belly. Touch your neighbor and say, stay right there. Stay there. Stay there. Even the handle sank in after the blade, which means you gave that thing such a... And the Lord told me to tell you, in a few minutes, we're about to shout for glory. But I don't want you glory. Uh-uh. Pull your hair back. If your eyelash is getting on your nerve, take your shoes off. If you gotta pull your shirt out, this is the wrong time to think you all of that. Let's go for broke. The Bible says, and he plunged him into his belly to the point that the, the, once the blade went in, the handle sank in after the blade. Here it is. And when you go for it, watch me. It's about to be a messy situation. You about to mess some people up. Woo! But I don't care how much you messed up, I'm not gonna stop until I completed my assignment.
And Ehud did not, did not pull the sword out. And the fat closed it over. Just stay there until it is complete. But they might come in here. He's not going to let anyone come in to disturb what you just started. I'm not moving until everybody in my house is saved. I'm not moving until I am 100% out of debt. Every right-handed person, take your left hand and just put it out there. Every right-handed person, and then every left-handed person, I need you to take your right hand. I need you to be uncomfortable. Because you're going to be uncomfortable for a season. But it's about to pay off. Now watch me, watch me. Watch me. Some of y'all, I'm uncomfortable. How? I'm like, I'm, I'm not used to that. I'm uncomfortable like giving God a praise. I know it. Just do it. Okay, okay, okay. I can't explain. What if I told you your plunge will run cancer out of your body? What if I told you your plunge is going to break every hand that the enemy has on you? Wait, 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 wait. Now, let me show you something. Let me show you one more scripture. Put your, put your arm down. Put your arm down. Okay. One more scripture. I'm done. Am I alone? Tell me the truth. Don't you lie to me. Maybe I, he was good, but God, that dog, he was long. Everybody say one, one blow is about to settle 18 years. I promise you I'm done. Bring that last scripture up that I sent y'all. That day, Moab was made subject to Israel. And the land had peace. Which means your good days are about to outnumber your bad. If you don't, if you don't plunge, if you don't plunge, if you don't plunge, get ready. Y'all mean get ready too. We about to. Yeah. Okay. Do me a favor. Reach over, just grab anybody by the hand. Shake the hand and say, we about to go for broke. And you better holler too. Because we about to put some super on your natural. You about to do what you've never done before. And he's going to give you the strength to complete it too. Do you hear me talking to you? I'm not talking about your deficiency. I'm not talking about your shortcomings or your faults. I'm, I'm zoning in on your creativity and you need to be bold. Where's we? On the count of three, if you're at home, you're going to type it on the screen, glory. God's about to seal you with power. Hear me clearly. In the next three quarters, an opportunity is going to be presented to you. And you're going to walk in, you're going to speak, and you're going to execute. And when you leave, your life is going to be better. This thing is spiritual. God did not send me here to play with you. Hear the word of the Lord. If you plunge today, it's about to break something tomorrow. If you give me glory today, you're going to see a shift in your lifestyle. Please don't play with me. Hold that hand. We about to cry glory up in here. And God's about to give you extra strength, extra oil, extra anointing, extra power, extra wisdom, extra knowledge, extra finances extra vision, ex extra people to help you accomplish your dream. On the count of three, shall glory! One, two, three! Receive the glory. Receive the glory. Glory! Receive the supernatural. Re 
receive the unexpected. Receive the help from the Lord. You're about to execute. You're about to do it. Hold that hand. Don't you let me go until we both feel it. Don't you let me go until we both feel it. Glory. It's bigger than it is. You're about to execute. You're about to travel the world to do what you do. You're about to get your passport. I need you to go find somebody who's doing some stuff. Grab their hand again and say, glory. Glory! Come on, you better find somebody who's a mover and a shaker. You better find somebody. You're going to be stronger than you've ever been. You're going to do more than you've ever done. You're going to be focused. I come against your enemies. I come against your naysayers. I bind every negative word. You are the woman of God. You are the woman of God. You are it. You are it. You are it. You didn't ask for it. You were given to us. We out here now. You about to get another job. You about to start your business. You about to get out of debt. Your body's about to be healed. Come on, y'all, don't play with me. Tell three people around you, say glory. I don't like this shout. I get the Lord say, tell them to plunge just a little bit harder. This thing is bigger than the normal. This ain't nothing skinny. This thing is huge. You got to give it all you got. You got to give it all you got. On the count of three, call down the glory of God. One, two, three. Now that's it. stop you nobody can stop you nobody can hinder you please go all the way please go all the way do everything do everything whatever you see make it whatever you dream you didn't ask for this you didn't even see this you didn't ask for this. You didn't even see this. You didn't want this. You didn't want this. We out of here. I want your singing degree to take off. I want your business to go places. I want your name to be carried. I want you to leave the country. I want you to travel the world. I want you to build what's never been built before. I want you to do what's never been done before. We gotta go. But I gotta do altar people. You should just walk the altar and say glory. 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 Lift your hands. Let me hear your worship for where you going. For where you going. For where you going. For where you going. Nobody leave the building. 
I would rather wait in line in traffic whether well, they wait another year to get my breakthrough. You better get your priorities straight. Lift your hands. Oh. And your necks. And your necks. And your necks. Three are about to be better than your first one. In your next, we gotta come out of this. No music, nothing but voices. Open your mouth that they could hear you in Africa. It's on you. You gonna break poverty. It's on you. You gonna be the one to deliver your family. You're the one that's gonna change your city. I promise you we gonna move. But everyone stand still, lift your hands, follow my lead, I hear the Lord. Tell them to give me 10 more seconds, not for where they are, but for where they're going. 10. It's bigger. And he gave them a hoot. And he handed you over to the church. Your life don't belong to you. And never wish that you could be somebody else other than yourself. Worship God for your originality for five seconds. Five. Online, please. You in the back of the woods, but God is about to bring you to the forefront. People are gonna ask, where did they find you? But they don't know your secret petition. Open your mouth for five more seconds. Nobody leave the building, but on your way to your seat, I just need to add a little more super to your natural. Cause within, before the year is out, you gonna see your chance. And you gonna have it, pay attention, for the rest of your life. You'll never lose it. On your way to your seat, just touch three people and say, glory. It's on you. Glory. It's on you. Glory. Nobody leave. I'll turn the mic over in five minutes. Glory. It's on you. Glory. On your way back to your seat, just touch three people and say, Glory. It's on you. It's on you. I have one last assignment. I just have one last assignment and I'm done.
You hear any? There are a thousand in the building and there are a thousand online. You're the curse breaker when it comes to the finances of your family. It's on you. Your sacrifice is what's going to break it. There are a thousand people in this building. I want you to sow a seed of $52. It's on your finance. It's on your seed. If you online, wherever you are, you've been feeling wealthy, but you don't have it yet. It's on you. If you are one of those that's going to sow it, can you just stand to your feet? Stand to your feet. If you're going to sow that 52. If you online, whenever you hear this, you might hear it tomorrow. But I need you to make sure that you release this seed because it's on you. They are gonna be blessed because you gave. It's on you. The least expected. Those of you all that's gonna sow that just lift your seed up to the Lord and start worshiping God that he handpicked you. Come on online. Come on online. You release your seed. Some of y'all feel like when I'm at home, nobody will know. No, God knows. And he's pulling on you right now to release your seed because it's on you. My assignment is complete.